Oh gosh, oh gosh. Hello guys. Welcome to another episode of Double A is your favorite podcaster. Arian and Amber. I'm back. I love this. He said that I'm not allowed to go on live by myself anymore. So, no. so if one of us is sick, we may just have to replay some old podcasts, which I'm sure you guys will not, you know, like, does it hate so much, I guess is the word. Because, I mean, I think we tell pretty good stories or pretty good cases. We do so, have some cases. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of um, people say that the very first um, one that we did, Soft Case, was popular. And then your Betty Ruth, I think, was popular. Yeah, that one. Um, that one and Amy Lynn Bradley. That Yo, one, yeah. Everybody on YouTube loves Amy, Amy Lynn Bradley. Like, it, it's... So those are very popular ones. So today's soft case, we are actually going to be taking it to the Romance City, which is in France. France, yeah. So um, we are talking about. Please excuse my um, <laughs> my pronunciation because this is going to get pretty bad. Theory, 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 pollen. Can you type so, it in the comments so I can try to say it? I'm in the back room filling up my medicine, so ooh, ooh, ooh. it's want it's wanting to have my my notes and my book here. So literally, like it's, it's everywhere. So, anyways, he is dubbed the monster of Diary. Martin. Okay, Diary. Um, he was dubbed a monster of Mont Mar um, Mont Montmartre Mont Marty. Um, so, anyways, he was born um, on November twenty eighth, nineteen sixty three, in Fort de France, um, Martinique. And so he is mixed. He is. Um, is she froze? Thanks. Uh oh. Not good. You're breaking up, my it's dear. It's okay. Just keep talking. I can hear you. Okay. Cool beans. Anyways, so um, he is he was considered bisexual, um, but he is mixed. It. From what I researched, there's nothing, no other information the, except for the fact that his father had left when he was short, like shortly after he was born. So I don't know exactly what he's mixed with. I just know that he's mixed with um, black and white. I don't know how deep that goes. And I don't know which side is which, honestly. So his mom is actually a became a teenage mother um, and so she the father took off shortly after um, he was born and she basically could not take care of the baby because of the fact that she was a teenage mother she could not take care of the baby so she gave him to his paternal grandmother to raise now, she raised him since he was a baby to about roughly between um, 10 years old. He then um, moved back in went with his mother. Now, by this time, his mother had married and the guy that she married had kids of his own. So he had stepbrothers and stepsisters. So here's the messed up part. The mother could care less about him and cared more about her husband's kids than her own. 
So basically she called up his dad and was like, hey, I don't know how this is going to work out. I'm going to need you to come here and get him and take okay. care of him. So at the age of 11, so not even a full year of, of him having her, or her having him, sorry, um, he moved it back in with his dad. Now his dad agreed to take him in just so he does not have to pay alimony, essentially. So throughout his childhood, um, he struggled school, um, struggled at school, both academically and socially. So he was very standoffish. And mind you, this is still um, in early 1970s because he was born in 1963. So early 1970s, close to 1980s. So at that time, having, you know, a mixed race child was still kind of like taboo, but it wasn't, it wasn't rare, I guess you could say. So he failed a lot of his exams and decided to enlist in the military at 17 because he was just like, well, um, you know, I'm not going to be going to college. Like I've been you know, I don't get along with people, which is crazy to me because you enlist in the military, you have to do teamwork. So he joined um, being a parachutist and being bisexual. And he was just like, uh oh, I heard myself. <laughs> and I wasn't talking. I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. So, um, like I said, he became a parachutist, and because of him being bisexual, and because he was of mixed race, he actually got bullied a, quite a bit um, in the military. And so, while he was in the army, he was arrested after robbing an older woman. Um, and held her at knife point. And although he only received two, a two-year uh, two sentence, he was suspended and was he was able to remain in the army, which I think now that gets you discharged. Um, so two years later, in 1984, he left the army and went to live with his mother again in Nantry, Paris, and he began working in a nightclub called the Paradise Latin, which um, put on transvestite shows, drag queen shows, things like that. And he actually became, um, began working as a drag artist. And it was a while that he was working at Paradise Latin, that he met his boyfriend or partner. His name was G um, Jean. I think that's how oh, you pronounce it's it. Like Sean. Like, it's like Jean, but yeah, it's like it's pronounced it like it's, it's like Sean, but it's Jean. Yeah, it's Jean. so they pronounce it like Sean. Sean Theory Mathurin. Um, they became really close. But they were both drug addicts, so they kind of like fed off of each other. So they became drug addicts, and but his lover's addiction was actually way worse than his. So Pollen was so in love with this dude and want and you know to feed him and to feed his his own addiction, he decided that you know, selling drugs wasn't enough to get their own drugs and to get, you know, to get money to get their own higher doses of drugs that he decided to start robbing and stealing. And um, that actually started his 
murders because these would be robberies turned bad starting off but then I guess he just started doing the murders just because so his um, one of his murders was a woman named Anna Barbera Pontes um, and her friend Jermaine Pitot Pitou, Pitot Pitot you can't French words names do not sound like how we're saying it or how I'm saying it because I don't, I don't know what's worse these names or when we were trying to do the Oregon city. Oh my god. <laughs> but the thing is though, like these, like some words you can't pronounce or you can't like enunciate. So like if double T's normally the T is silent. I don't know. But anyways. Um, they were attacked on October 5th, 1984. Um, Jermaine survived, but Barbier Pontus, or I should just say Anna, because dang it, that's her first name. Anna, the one I can pronounce, Anna had died um, after she was um, beaten and asphyxiated. Excuse me, my tongue is dry today. Yeah. Today has been a long day, you guys. Like I was supposed to be doing a double feature today, but that's not happening. I had a conditioner, a heavy con uh, conditioner land on my foot while I was taking a shower. Did chasing you the kids, chasing a small dog that had a corn in the cob in her mouth because one of the kids left the corn in the cob on their plate and she got a hold of it. Three Between three kids had three, four projects in a week that had to be turned in. that post I made about you on, the, on our Facebook page? I have not, I have not seen it, but today <laughs> is... Basically, I was telling our viewers and our listeners that follow our Facebook page that uh, we we were be running late and we'll start after we revive you because you're momentarily dead for being a mom. <laughs> I don't really jump from getting this dog's corn on the cob out of the mouth, getting giving the kids seconds to cleaning up the kitchen, to jumping in the shower and getting hit with a shampoo bottle, a heavy shampoo bottle, plus my body wash, plus my face wash, decided to land on my foot all at the same time and almost slipped and fell because the the rug is wet and I did not know it was that wet. But anyways, okay, to, so to continue on. Anyways, so Anna Barbier had died um, after being beaten and strangled. And so her friend Jermaine was so traumatized that she wasn't able to give any details or descriptions to the police um, of this guy. So that was one. Um, eight other victims were killed between October and November of 1984. Um, most who lived in the 18th precinct in Paris. The methods used to commit all the murders um, Diff were all different. Some were suffocated with plastic. Some were made to drain, um, drink drain cleaner. Um, the others were badly beaten to death. Um, other things that linked to all of the mother, or uh, mothers, wow, murders <laughs> together were the ages of the victim and the fact that they had all been robbed. Like I said, he was, um, he started getting into robbery pretty early on when he was in when he was in the army, but it became worse once he started dating this guy. So a further um, another eight were committed between December of 1985 to June 1986. And since there were very little evidence, um, police really couldn't do anything except for the fact that they were able to compare fingerprints um, found at the previous crime scenes and realized that they were the same the same person. 
Um, so another victim, Rachel Cohen, was murdered by Paulin on November 25th, 1987. He had attacked another elderly woman the same day and she had survived. Her name um, was Berthy, oh my God, Final Terry. Put it in the comment. Hold on, because literally, I'm trying, I'm losing myself in my notes because my handwriting is really bad. So um, he killed Genevieve um, Germont. I love that name, Genevieve. I've always loved that name. Um, two days later by strangulation. And then, so after recovering from the attack, Madame Final Terry, Bertha, basically, was able to give the police a description of the man who had attacked her. This led to the arrest of Paulin on December 1st. And um, after being recognized from the description by police inspector while he was walking down the road. So as of, there was 18, he confessed to 21 murders. There was 18 confirmed that the police confirmed. The other ones, um, they were unable to fully investigate. And so he was, he was sent to jail to await trial, but while he was in jail, did she really just leave me? I'm listening. Oh my gosh. So while um, he was sitting in jail, he had, I think he, I believe he had AIDS prior to this, but he became um, more sickly because of AIDS. And he actually um, got so sick that he was almost paralyzed and he was sent to the hospital for meningitis and tuberculosis. He had died on April 16, 1989. He was still awaiting his trial. Um, the death was proved to be um, a natural cause of death due to AIDS. So, um, there's that he didn't, he did not, he was still awaiting trial. So he was not committed. Um, his lover though, his lover was tried and convicted and received a life sentence plus 18 years without parole. So there's that. So it's a very, it's a very open and shut case for Mr. Pollen here. I want to say pollen like it, it's a pollen outside. But it's, a, yeah, it's, it's a very open and shut case. And I mean, I can understand his upbringing. He was not loved at all. He was just basically tossed to the side. But we all, I kind of hoped with him being in the military, it would have, he would have, you know, been able to turn himself around, I guess. But that didn't work out. Well, what do you think the military does to people? Do you think it turns them into warm, loving people that actually can conduct teamwork? Because almost, almost every single military person I met, except for one person that I know, are complete assholes and they're very desensitized and they're not all about that there, there's a lot that i know except for my husband because he's a he's a total jackass but but uh, there's a lot of military people that that i know that are actually quite nice the thing is when they meet other military people they have this like whole other side to them like almost kind of like they can only joke with those people essentially oh, their language is only other military people understand 
Right yeah, like, like, and, and I mean, the thing is, like, since my family's been, I have my dad retired Air Force. My brother is now retired Air Force. My sister-in-law is still in the Air Force. Um, Like, she just ranked up to, I believe, Master Sergeant. But, I mean, they, like, since I've been around the military for so long that I can understand their banter. And it doesn't hurt, you know, it doesn't hurt my feelings like that. And you got to think, like, I've been around Marines, too. They're god awful. <laughs> I mean, they are. Whoo. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, um, but. I mean, you would think that it would somewhat straighten a person out to where you know not necessarily not necessarily turn him into Mr. Goody Two Shoes but straighten him out to where he realizes that the life that he had was not what he wants or deserves. Or maybe it could have just lit a flame inside of him. You know being yelled at being like having strict orders, having to do certain things, certain time frame, maybe it, it made something go off inside of him. It may, it may have triggered something. Well, I also think, I also think that, you know, his fellow soldiers, his fellow, you know, people that he's supposed to be, um, what is it called? Um, protecting his country with, they weren't, helping him with his I because his insecurities I guess because like I said this was in the 1980s 1970s 1980s because he joined when he was 17 um so late 1970s early 1980s someone of a mixed race plus plus being homosexual or yeah, bisexual you couldn't disclose your sexuality in the, in the military. That's he was quite he was quite open about it. That's the thing. So even even to this day, I think back I think back then you had to. I think, but the thing is, he was in he was in Paris though. Let's see. So I don't know how their military goes, but I know right now it's a um, don't ask, don't tell thing going on right now. But I mean, even to this day, there's multiple people in, in the military that are sexually harassed, not just women, but men. You know, even even if they come out as bisexual, meaning they, you know, they like both men and women, okay, they can still be outed, like, automatically. Oh, well, you're just going to uh, mess around and sleep with every single dude that you see. But that's not the case. And believe it or not, listeners and people who are watching this, Gays have standards too, <laughs> just like straight people. We have standards. You're gay. Did you just come yeah. out? You said just like straight people, we have standards. Are you gay? Are yeah, you because I like nudes. Now I do oh, like females too, though, because there are really some pretty ass females. So you meant to say straight people? It's not like he said street people i'm thinking like you all gang gang over there i'm like wait we, we got to call like the gangs you gay is that your way of telling us you're gay did you just come out you, you got the gang code what gang <laughs> what's that <laughs> LGBT, the lgbt set oh my god oh I, can't. I have no problem i have um gay and lesbian in my family and my friendship circles Aryan, are you bisexual i mean i've explored it I will say that I have, but you're you're not bisexual. Would I mean, I don't think I, here's the thing. I don't think I can be in relationship with a female, but I can fool around with one. 
Secret. I have to. I've explored my sexuality enough to know that I'm not a lesbian. But if I was single, I would not turn down foreplay. Right. I'm telling you. There was a line in a song that Nicki Minaj said. I don't really fool with Nicki Minaj, but this song or this line is it. It's like, well, fuck, I look like turning down some head. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's the thing. Guys. A lot, I'm not going to say all, a lot of straight women actually watch a lot of lesbian porn. It's the only porn I watch. Mama, 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 my mama already know. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> but I mean, it's back so in, in in the military. So, like, it, it's it's gotten a, a slightly better. Slight, I say slightly, but there's still a lot of males that go off and be like, "Oh, well, I'm a manly man. Like, if you come at me." You, you know, like I'm gonna. I I'm gonna want to hear from a manly heterosexual. What is your problem with a flamboyant gay guy? What's your problem with even a manly gay guy? Which are, by the way, quite sexy. With, us, with us females, with us females, if there was, you know, like a uh, um a lesbian that came in and hit on us we find that fucking freaking like we'll flirt right back like hey honey do you know how many right I was like, at, because here's the thing okay regardless if you're gay lesbian straight you everybody like has standards Every, there's a difference between flirting because you're wanting to have fun fun and there's oh you want to start off a relationship and a lot of times and i've find this very like um interesting i've noticed that like partnerships between people that are of the lgbtq community actually last longer than married people i posted up the name for their viewers i posted up the name of who this um well i'm showing you the name that she typed who this case is about i'm gonna leave it up for a little bit before i take it down but for viewers, should just not be, should be as the as the title of the live. I think, um, or I think I dubbed his no, nickname. No, your tighter, your tighter. Your title is the monster of Montmartre. Okay, but he, um, I mean, like it's it's just to me, it doesn't make sense. I guess because I I righteously don't care what you like. As long as it's not children. Right. But if you are into females, if you're into guys, if you're into both, more power to you. <laughs> like, go for it. Hey, I need some shopping buddies, too, because I got a straight friend right here that don't like shopping. Um, I shop on Amazon. I don't like physically shopping. I give me ten minutes and I'm cool. If it's gonna be more than ten minutes, don't invite me. Like unless I'm in a good mood. But I really don't. She's gotta, like she's gotta be the one that's like, oh, let's go and do this, because then that's then, when you have maybe that small window of time that she's okay with yeah. doing something. So you oh, got like, uh, uh. What's the plan for today? Shopping? Nope. Mm -mm. We can unless go eat though. <laughs> <laughs> we could go eat though, but that's yeah, about it. Eat. But if we're actually going in a shopping place in Babalo and maybe Walmart on a good day because I hate that fucking place. But Amazon all day, baby. They got the two hour delivery too. So <laughs> it's just to us, like we just want to know for our straight male audience our manly our quote-unquote manly manly men my glasses are crooked because i slept in them but anyways so our manly manly men like what is it about gay gays that you know um gays that you know like 
what is it about them that just you you just get to the point where you just want to like beat them up I guess because I've seen a lot of that like it, yeah. it wouldn't even be a gay person going off and and flirting with this guy it's just someone that knows that he's gay immediately it's wants right to walk down the street and then these guys these macho men just come up and just want to you know what I'm thinking honestly I think that a man that is that fucking insecure with their own sexuality that is threatened by someone who is secure enough in their sexuality to flaunt it and flaunt it damn good. I think they're fucking jealous for one. I think they find that that man looks good because funny. I see some of these men that dress up. I wouldn't even call it yeah. drag. I would just say just do their makeup and baby, they look better than most of these women. And I think it pisses these men off because they get confused. But honey, just like us women, us straight women, we look at other women and we can see if they're fucking gorgeous and beautiful. Or if it's studs and, and I don't know if a stud wants to be called handsome. Or beautiful, but if they look good, we'll say it. And we're not afraid to say, bitch, you look good. But I think I mean, like, afraid. there are some straight women that are like the straight men. Close you know, as fuck. Like, I'll tell like, you, I'm Barbie, you gorgeous. Right. Like, honey, if you're flirting with me, I will flirt right back. And you don't even have because. to tell me if I think you're beautiful, I think you deserve to know that because a lot of times people do not get told that they're beautiful. Guys, let me tell you people. one thing. We our guys are not the only ones that look at butts and boobs. We do too. I love it can be. We literally have sat down and ate seeing a woman pass by with a butt. We will be staring and talking about it. Like it, and it's not because of a jealous feature. It's because it's, like it's if they, I'm like, oh, pretty, nice. yeah, if it's pretty, then we get jealous. Then we're just like, not to the jealous where we're like, oh, we gotta make fun of her. No, it's a jealous like, damn, who is your mom? And daddy? How she do that? Is? Is? I'm making it up for that kind of ass. I'm doing all right. Girl. Ass. <laughs> no, so, but we we can compliment same sex. Couples, we can compliment our own gender without tearing them down. And that is the problem in America. America is too afraid to uplift each other and compliment each other that they feel superior and that they have to be the better one. I'm not better than you and you're not better than me. You're fucking gorgeous and you're fucking worth it. Don't hate on me because I'm not going to hate on you. Right. I mean, it's just, it, it got, it's really sad for for pollen because like i said he's he grew up his mother didn't want him his grandmother technically did not want him she like was hesitant and then mother came back and or he came went back to the mother's picture mother could care less about him cared more about her husband's um kids her stepkids more than him Dad only took him in so he doesn't have to pay alimony or child support. Went to the military. Not only was he bullied and harassed because he was half race, but because he was bisexual. So then, and the military did not do any good for him in that aspect but they also did not punish him when he had that first offense of robbery at knife point at knife point and you only gave him two years sentence but but let him stay in the military that should have been a dishonorable discharge shouldn't it? so i mean it but it also didn't help that his, I mean, he just had many factors. It didn't help that his lover was, I wouldn't, he, he wasn't supportive. Because to me, your partner should be like supporting you. Any bad habits that you have, they should be the one to be like, hey, no. But his habits were worse than Pollen's. His, his drug addiction, everything was way worse than Pollen. And Pollen loved him so much because he was the only one that gave him any kind of attention that he was willing to do anything 
to feed his addiction along with his That's over. scary. That's scary to give somebody that much power. You see what I'm eating? I can't eat a banana. I love bananas. It makes me gag. I'll make you gag. Not a, not a lot of things make me gag, but a banana does. I, <laughs> I, I, know it's know it. I don't know what it is. It's also the smell. Like, I can't. I start almost throwing up at the smell of banana. Even, art, even artificial banana flavoring. I but I can make one hell of a banana pudding, though. But you don't taste it. No, I don't taste it. I let everyone else taste it. And it got to the point where I made it so much that it's literally like I know exactly how much to put in without ever tasting it. So, I mean, we've, we've gone through every topic, you guys, to, to talk about this. And we've only been here like, what, 35 minutes? So is that like your second banana? I think that's like your second because I think you were the beginning. That's okay because I'm drinking tea. But anyways, um, so that is it for Mr. Paulin here. Let us know what you guys think. We're gonna ramble on about some other stuff. Yeah, because I have a question. We, like, we like to talk. Mm. Just not with ourselves. No, we don't answer ourselves. I sometimes do. I, I swear I was answering myself earlier while I was cooking. So, how does Sunday fun to go? You already know because you watched it. So, <laughs> shut up. Like I said, I was really about to answer myself. I was staring at myself on the screen. I was fixing to answer myself like, okay, let me tell you. Okay, so, you guys are not allowed to watch me ever again on live by myself. Just like type in the comments, Francie, just go on. Just, just get out of live. <laughs> just get on, just get on your anchor without showing your face. Just just do that. Then I would have been like, okay, cool. So we're gonna end this at five minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> Let me do a quick bye. You guys that uh, follow our Facebook page, I literally made a post. I just watched her entire live today. And I said, the next time that I'm sick or not feeling well, I will go live from under my cover. I don't care. You know, I'm not the one for makeup. I, I wore lipstick for you twice. I don't care about makeup. So I look as sick as can be. I'll have a cover over my face or whatever, and we'll go live. I haven't been wearing makeup or my hair. My hair's air drying right now. It's it's still wet, pretty wet at the back. But this is how my hair is when it's naturally dried. All but, I know is Aryan cannot go unwatched. Like I said, okay, the hoodlum, one of them was supposed to go in with me. We were going to talk about, you know, how this virus has affected her wanting to go to school. Because she has been wanting to go. She's been looking forward to physically going to school and seeing her friends. Because she hadn't seen them since the last part of last year. Before you know, COVID, yeah. and then well, she's gonna be even more upset. Huh? She's gonna be even more upset because they they have extended virtual until after fall, and then they give, they give um, parents the option to send them back to school or continue virtually. And I'm choosing to keep my children home because I do not trust. Um, in the first week of school opening, 22 people already died. So I'm not going to trust my children in the school system. So they're going to be virtual until COVID is over, completely dead and gone. It's not going to be completely dead ever, but they, they've they got to figure out something better than what we have. Until we got going on now. Until I know that my children can go to school without dying, they will be virtually taught. And if that means that I will have to change them from the school that they're in and do the K-12 online, I will do that. They'll be virtually talked to keep their life it's, their, and their the life thing life. is like it's been so hard on them like it's so hard on them because you know they want to sit there and they want to talk to their friends they want to you know interact and and whatnot but it's also hard on the parents because we have to constantly remind them regardless that you're in virtual class 
you have to act Brooklyn. like you're in school, like how you would act in school. Like earlier today, the oldest one, you know, I caught him watching YouTube. And I said, oh, uh -uh. hold on one second. Are you done with your schoolwork? No, but it's it's break time. What's break time? What what's break time? Because so their schedule, the two oldest schedules are if you guys are like this, Tuesdays and Thursdays are basically their independent work days. They have a meeting, but then they have their own independent work that they can do throughout the day. I catch up on everything and other stuff. Yeah. And then they can also relook at anything that's upcoming just so they're prepared, but they don't have to do the work until that day that they have to do it. So I get them to do their all their independent work at once. So that way they do have more time in the afternoon because three days out of the week, they're literally sitting in front of their computer all day except for one hour for lunch. Yeah. So on their independent work days, yeah, get all your work done. Like the middle child, she gets done by 11 o'clock, boom, everything's done, turned in, all correct. Mm -hmm. She's got the whole day to do whatever she wants to do. Let's show These are my children that she currently has with her. My background is going to be trying to mess with them. But we're trying to get it where the background doesn't mess. <laughs> oh my god, Arian, point them out real quick while I'm getting it. So I don't know how to point them out. The one that's making the face leaning towards the camera, that's the oldest. The middle one is the girl. The those two are both in fifth grade. And then the one standing up, he's in third grade right now. He's the youngest. But what happens is so the two the youngest one has classes every single day. Exactly. On Wednesdays, he has a late advanced class at 1230. They're all three in advanced classes, just so you know. Yeah. So his meetings are only on Wednesdays for those. The other two meet on the three days that they have school all day. So today, like I said, I was like, are you done to the oldest? I said, are you done with all your schoolwork? He said, it's break time. I said, not on independent work day. You don't have any kind of break until I tell you, hey, come and eat your lunch. Because right. they normally work while I'm making something. It's just easier. And that way they can get all their stuff done. I can get cooking in for them to have lunch. And then once they finish up lunch, they you know, clean up their table or their mess. And then they go back to work. But he thought it's like his normal school day where he has one hour lunch. That's not how it works on independent school, on independent work day. <laughs> like I told him, I said, it's not a lot of work. You just have to sit down, go ahead and do it after you have morning meetings because they have their morning meetings with their homeroom teacher or their advisory teacher at the beginning. So, um, but this week they'll be doing testing. The middle one actually took two hours to do her testing today, which kind of freaked me out because you know how many times I done walk past her, I'm thinking she had her camera on. And then one time she was trying to ask me what a word meant and I completely forgot her camera was on. And guys, I kid you not, I leaned from the top of the laptop over her camera. So her whole class done seen the bottom half and my up my nose upside down when I was trying to read. Oh, I thought you were going to say like your boobs were out. Because that's something that happened to me. They would just see all my boobs. <laughs> I mean, and I had this morning was... Of all the mornings that have been super quiet for the youngest one, today was his testing day this morning. And it was especially supposed to be quiet. So I was like, oh, well, it's quiet every morning when it comes to him being in school. I mean, even his teacher was like, he's in a quiet place. We don't have to worry about him moving and doing all this stuff. But 
today, of all the days, and quiet, on the day of his testing, I kid you not, his teacher was on, he was trying to do his testing, all my Tupperware fell. Every single one of them fell, just fell to the floor. And I was like, oh, to Out of make nowhere? No, well, I had opened up the cabinet and they just all came crashing down. And then to make it worse, I have my big dog's dog food bowl that I wash every day now. It's huge, okay? It decided while the Tupperware fell, it would fall off of the dish drain and it's metal. So loudest noise you can think of. Then I had the two oldest trying to work on their project this morning, like do their research for their project this morning before class rather than watching videos. And um, they were sitting beside each other arguing arguing of all the morning that have been super quiet it had to be the day the youngest had testing done so Arian, how does it feel to be a mom i don't i don't want kids <laughs> <laughs> nope don't have sex <clears throat> please the i'm kids. joking <clears throat> and don't the thing is it's not because i don't love the kids it's not I love the kids dearly. They know I love them. They know I will do anything for them. And they know even, they know that I will get them anytime, even though I say that I want to toss them out the window. Like, they know that I love them. But mixed in with virtual school, between three kids and the one week, seven days that I've had them, they've had four projects. Four, a third grader had to write a paragraph. You know what he said? I told him he had to read the story and then he had to do character traits, but he had to write it in a paragraph, five complete sentences, okay? I said, Michael, did you complete your paragraph? He said, what's a paragraph? I said, five complete sentences. He said, no, I wrote it one long sentence. And he submitted it. I told him many times he's got to come to me for me to see it before he submits it. I give him a little, like, push, you know, but I don't fully go on and do the work for him. He still has to do it. But when I read his sentence, I said, oh, no. No, 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 no. To make it worse, he has been turning in assignments as comments. If you guys have kids in virtual class, there's comments down where the teachers can respond, other students can respond, but these students are put turning in their assignments as comments. So it's not going in as submitted assignments. So I have had to go multiple times check every single class for any submission comments that he wrote and put it as submitted assignments. I kid you not. This has been my week along with three dogs. And like I said, I came in with all three kids chasing my smallest dog, my youngest one, because she got corn on the cob in her mouth. And then to make it worse, my big dog that the middle child wanted to walk got out of his leash while outside. <laughs> so we were dealing with a lot today. <laughs> and tomorrow is a long day for school. Guess what I've been doing? Laying in my bed all day up until she made me come over here and get on live. I was just, you know, I just, like I, I said, I love them, but this virtual school is just, you can't expect these kids to immediately know what to do and where to go. Yeah. Just because okay. you put out a video. It's like college. It's like, you know, 
how we do online college, it's like that except for things are not where it's supposed to be. And they're clicking so many things to get to one area. Yeah, it's not really a well thought out plan. Like these are, these is, you have to really be trained to, to see where you're going. Because bless their hearts, there's only so much that I can do before I'm just like, we need to ask a teacher and we've done ask these teachers multiple times how to do certain things they either a don't respond or b it still does not make any kind of lick of sense i tell y'all i think for Ari not to have any children and not to want any children now i honestly think she'd be a great mother because like when when Counselor called my husband and myself earlier talking about, you know, my kids weren't in certain class. Well, I know like hell when they're here, they weren't in the class. I know like hell when they're there. Arian is like really strict on that because we do not play about that. As soon as we told Arian, what's the number? Hang up and call. Them. And I'm like, the first thing I did was email, email their social studies teacher who supposedly was the class that they did not attend to and he literally emailed me back within five minutes and said no they're in class pretty steady he's the only teacher that i really really like because um my kids had to start school late because of a error with the school system but as soon as i got their class list i sent out an email to every one of their teachers teachers and you know what's going on and that I would like to meet them and during COVID you can't physically meet so I wanted to set up a meeting time and he was the only one that set up a time with me that day promptly responded and followed through and I met with him virtually and we talked and we vibed and my husband and I we just we liked him that much and we decided you know if there's anything we will talk to him because we know now he's reliable and that right. our children, he has a vested interest in our children. And he actually, and he wants, and he's a Caucasian man, but he also wants to not just teach them history, but teach them the truth about history, the truth about black history, not the fabricated history book history. He wants to tr teach them the truth about their culture. And that stood out to me, the fact that he knew that there was wrong in what the system is teaching about the black culture. And he wanted to make sure that black children and the white children knew the facts. And I said, you know what? I mean, the kids absolutely love him. That's why it's I was awesome. like, let me email him because they're very interactive in his class. Of He's all the classes awesome. that I have watched them do without without the teacher asking them to answer a question, they're very straightforward with their social studies teacher. They're immediately very interactive with him without him having to ask them, hey, can you answer this question? They're immediately wanting to answer it and they're paying attention. So I knew something was wrong. So when he told me that, I immediately called Amber and her husband back and I'm like, <clears throat> give me the phone number right mm -hmm. now because... I don't know if y'all miss like misheard a class or what. No, but she kept man. her seats. <laughs> she I, had her seats. I screenshotted it, sent it to the text message I had when I called their guidance counselor. They're like, yeah, administration emailed me, said that they're missing their social studies class. A, I double made sure that I was talking about the right teacher, mentioned the teacher's name multiple times, so she cannot say that I did not mention the teacher's name, because I did. B, okay, I forwarded all the emails <laughs> that me and the social studies teacher had today, emailed it, forwarded it to her. So I'm double checking tomorrow to make sure that she received it and that administration's got it because I wrote her an email and I said, here is the forwarded email that they have been in class every single day 
for social studies along with all their other classes, can you please make sure administration fixes this and does not ruin their record of attendance? Girl, I said, look at her, me and mama, and look at me curled up in my covers going back to sleep. Because here's the thing, okay? There, it, you know, you guys needed a break yeah. from the kids. I didn't understand that. My okay. brain my, my phone just started talking to me like Siri was like, I didn't understand that. I was in the bathroom the other day at my friend's house. I was sitting on the toilet. I had a lot to do in that bathroom. And then out of nowhere, Siri's like, huh? <laughs> and was asking me questions. I'm like, Siri, I'm trying to shit. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then she kept on talking. I don't understand. Siri, I am trying to shit. No one summoned you. And then she's like, yeah, I mean, I'm not understanding right now. Siri. <laughs> electronic. But, I mean, this is this is the bad part. So I thought, you know, having I have a routine set for my Echo Dot, for my Alexa, for the kids. Yeah, it's necessary. And just so they know what time hey 10 minutes before they're supposed to be in their morning meetings get in there check your email get to your morning meetings you're boom bam you're there yeah that's how i have it here so like, you know, I like, thought, since the youngest one has this meeting first the two oldest have meetings an hour later i figured okay well a one minute bts song along with his reminder that he has to get into class will be okay right apparently not because one time i didn't realize that his class had full on fully started this was before 8 a.m and bts is just blaring <laughs> on my on my dot and the computer that he's at is my desktop which is just a couple of feet <laughs> away from the dot <laughs> and apparently when I came out and I was trying to you know I was going to tell Alexa to stop but some of his classmates were already dancing <laughs> to a song <laughs> so, <laughs> so I mean I just let them do it now also this virtual class I got mad I almost went off on the two oldest avid teacher on camera in front of all other students because she was super late to class. And technically their advanced class, their advanced related arts class is from 1245 to 145, but she starts at 1245, really ends at 115 and lets the kids do what they need to do for their avid class from 115 to 145. Fair enough, cool. But she didn't show up until close to 110. And here we have five, six students waiting on this teacher. And she gets on getting on to them about talking to each other, trying to, f these kids are trying to figure out where the teacher is and trying to see if they have to leave the, the um, meeting because the teacher's not there. So here comes the teacher she out of nowhere. Yes, she got onto them. Oh, no. She got on and got onto them. I said, oh, but at the time I was trying to help um, the youngest do his stuff on his work because it was very important that he needed to get some stuff done because it was stating that it was overdue and I was trying to figure out how is it overdue when I've seen him do it but that's when I figured out that he was writing the answers in the comments rather than submitting the assignments where that he should be doing it so I was sitting there trying to figure all that out when I heard the avid teacher just going off on these kids yeah. and I'm mean, first off you a whole 15 minutes late these kids are not talking about anything else besides hey has she been in here yet am I late do we need to leave the meeting like really lady <laughs> I'm like, I would have said something right then and there um you're in the wrong 
they were concerned about your lateness, your tardiness to a class that you're supposed to teach. They cannot teach themselves. They're waiting on you, wondering where you're at. And now you come in and you have the audacity to get onto these children that were concerned about you. Are you going to teach this class or not? I literally, the oldest one kept on looking at me like, Can, do we have to leave this meeting? I told him, I said, no, stay there until 1.15. If she's not there by 115, yes, I, like get out of it. And if she comes on after 115 and states that you weren't there in class, then I will send an email saying you were there for 30 minutes waiting. Like like I did with that other teacher. Try, yeah. Try to play my kids. Y'all, right. we've been on here an hour and. We, we we talked for like almost 40 minutes about the crime. So if you guys are just now tuning in or skipped a whole bunch and just like came on this part like I sometimes do on most videos. We talked about the case. It was just 40 minutes prior <laughs> to this. So we're going to actually end it because I've, I've got to get some sleep, but I've got to upload this stuff too. So and let I'm us know in the comments talk. below. Let us know about what you think about the case. Like I said, or like we said, any of our um, straight friends or straight listeners that want to let us know how you guys feel about a very flamboyant um, gay or lesbian person coming up to you, or not really coming, not even coming up to you, just being not, themselves. Yeah, just how you see them, how you personally see them. And just enlighten us on why um, people feel like it's okay to just bother and somebody and just be right. there and harass them. And then also to our fellow aunties, grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, fathers, whoever's got kids. <laughs> and, caregiver. Summing up with a caregiver. Yeah, that has kids in virtual learning. Let us know how it's going and let us know if there's any embarrassing um, story. <laughs> You'll see that's one of start first as a mother, it's going great for me. As an auntie, I want to pull every single piece of my hair out. And I'm so glad that you feel how I feel every day. And I want to thank you for giving me peace. And a peace of mind because my head was literally going to explode. Thank you. And be sure not to bring them back this oh, year. No. Like I said, I'm tossing it. I'm tossing them out the window. <laughs> I'm tossing them out the window. I'm not even stopping. It's uh you you're gone. You're gone. I love them, but God, it's this class. How are you gonna give these third and fifth graders these projects that they don't even know what to do? How are you first off? I'm still not over this thing. How are you gonna give them a science project to form rock candy that takes seven days to do, but give them two days to write a report on them? Like welcome to motherhood, honey. You know what? We made ice cream in a bag with soy milk. Don't ever do that. That doesn't work very well. Like it does cream. Also, you really do need ice cream salt to do the ice. Not Ida 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 whatever. Ida whatever. Is yeah, whatever <laughs> salt for the ice because that shit melted really, really quickly. And it became like slush. But the kids did eat it though. They like slushies. It's a soy milk slushy, you guys. That sounds disgusting. It's what they ate. In a bag. It is a block bag. So anyways, you guys let us know in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, listen, whatever. We will be back here on Thursday with Amber's Piss You Off Thursday. I love pissing y'all off. I can't and wait. That's going to be the day that I get to sit back. And relax. Not really relaxed, but I'll probably have a blank mind because Thursday is their independent work day. And that's normally the day that the kids decide that they want to run around like crazy and yell and scream at each other. <laughs> Guys, um, Thursday will be my second to last episode of season one. So I'll, I have two episodes left. Ariane has one episode left. And we have two Sunday fun days left. 
in this season. And then we'll start season two on my issue off Thursday. And um, Arian and I will be um, joining forces in presenting the case, which is very, is very good for a issue off Thursday to have two people present the case because those cases can be quite difficult as Arian has figured out when she had one case to look at. Um, finding these cases, um, pinpointing down exact clues and, and whereabouts and trying to pick a timeline and trying to pick stuff can be very, very difficult when you have cold cases and that's why they're cold for a reason. Um, case in point, when I did that William, or it was Herman, Wilson, what was it, Wilhelm, Larson, whatever, the only photo ever of this man was a tombstone. It was not a, a picture of him, period. And like his wife, his second wife, it was like we couldn't find her anywhere. <coughs> so a lot of these cases that I have will definitely require some teamwork, and I'm so glad that we'll be teaming up. And we'll be knowing each other's cases beforehand and helping each other um, present them to you in a more uniform way. Um, I did like the surprise factor when I would give a case or Arian would give me a case and we'd be like, what the fuck? And you would get our reaction, our real life true reaction. But I think it would be better this way also because we won't be all over the place with it having it like an interview. We'll be more it will be more presented in a way where you can understand and we're not all over the place. So this change will be a beneficial change. And for one, it definitely will help out on a push you off Thursday. Cause I think Arian sees how difficult Thursdays are. I mean, I knew how difficult unsolved mystery unsolved cases are, but, but these are having, having international unsolved cases, that's a whole different story. Cause here's the thing yeah. you got like, it goes from we have to literally like translate. translate these and I can only translate a little bit of Chinese and I can't mostly Korean, but yeah. like I can translate those. But other than that, like, but it takes me a while. Like I have to read it really, really slowly. And the, the cases that I do have from overseas, the the best sources usually come from local newspaper because it doesn't really get to mainstream. But the cases that I have overseas, I can't really get the proper information I need because I can't translate it, and you cannot trust Google Translate. It, yeah, it Google Translate matter. sucks yes, so bad. So it, it gets a little difficult. So having how many eyes do we have? Six eyes. On these cases, eight, two, four, six, eight eyes on these cases. I had a kid. <laughs> I thought I was having a bad day. I'm surprised just, I spelled my name right today because I literally was like, um, how do I spell my name? Mine is saved, so I've got to spell it. <laughs> okay, whatever device I get on, it already knows who I am. Good God. My guinea pigs are fighting, so, I mean, unless one of them die, I'm not going to worry about it. No, oh, Lord. Okay, guys, so we're going to end today's podcast. Like I said, just come back on Thursday for Piss You Off Thursday with Amber. And I'm going to be trying to get my sanity back and try to get some sleep. I was, try I was trying to – I'm sorry if I'm moving the camera too much, you guys. I can't get comfortable. My butt hurts. Um. And finally, these kids are asleep when I told them to go to sleep. So thank God. <laughs> that's one thing that's going right today. So we will see you guys here on Thursday. We hope you guys have a great night. Be safe. Be vigilant. I don't know what she's doing. But goodbye, guys. Good night.